pretty tall building actually. Four or five floors, I think. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Azores. Um, I think I'm a bit late. I woke up quite late today. Um, yeah, that's 11.30, so uh, Nick is in the bodyboarding European Championships, one of the events is here in the Azores, uh, and I think his final is now, so we're going to have to rush and uh, try to catch his final still. Alright, backpack, and here we go. So the walk took a lot longer than I expected. Had to go through one of the poor neighborhoods around here. It's, uh, yeah, it's still, people still live quite rough here, I think. I think it used to be one of the poorer regions in the EU. Um, and yeah, you notice it. You can see that the life standard is way below the average Portuguese life standard. Oh, I can see the beach now. Look at that, that's pretty cool. So I got to the comp now, uh, unfortunately it's finished, I overslept a bit too long. We decided to come to the traditional <coughs> green tea plantations here from the Azores. Um, those are the plantations back there, um, we'll have a look at that shortly and now we're going to go have some tea. Okay, so if I got it correctly, uh, these are the tea leaves and then they will grind them in this weird machine over here and the final product is the very thin tea powder that you can see over here. We're in the tea plantations now. I think they go all the way up over there. Um, <laughs> I think everything's picked manually actually. So I think people just walk through these little paths here that uh, just walk through and uh, they, they pick it. They pick it from here or they cut it and then they pick it. I have no clue how you make tea or how you pick it. But it's a really interesting place. Um, I didn't know they had tea in the Azores which is a big um, fail on me being half Portuguese not knowing that. But uh, yeah, they, it's pretty famous apparently, and uh, the plantations are quite big. So it looks like they pick it manually. That must be a weird job. Imagine living in a small island, and your real job is to pick tea and work at a tea plantation. That's such a different reality from my current reality, and from my friends' realities. I suppose that's what uh, getting to know new places is all about, is trying to like see into other people's lives and see how they have a very different life from yours, yet it's, it's kind of the same really, isn't it? Yeah. Very philosophical for a tea plantation. situation. Or do you think they dump trash in a tea plantation, Tom? It's really out of context. We are in an abandoned hotel. I think it used to be a five-star hotel and it, um, it overlooks the, uh, the volcano crater back there. I'll show you guys in a minute. Um, we're exploring it for a little bit. For the last day we're here on the island. Then we're gonna head to the airport and catch her flight out. This is a pretty creepy place. 
Not sure whether they actually never finished building it or if it was a hotel and then it was abandoned. But either way, it's a really creepy place. It's an elevator shaft. Oh wow. Look at that. That would have been the main lobby, I think. You can see there's still carpet on the floor. <laughs> so, I think either they were very close to completion or uh, it was actually a hotel for a while. Let's have a look at one of the rooms. I don't think you can see the view very well because of the brightness, but I'll show it to you. It's insane. You can see the big lagoon in the middle of the crater from here. So this would have been the view from a regular hotel. I think that bit there was the balcony. Would have had a window here. And uh, this would have been the bed and the room, but instead you have a moldy... <laughs> moldy floor. I'm gonna go try and uh, find the top now. This is a pretty tall building actually. Four or five floors I think. I decided to do a quick visit and see a pineapple plantation. So they're in these big uh, greenhouses and they're just aligned in rows on the floor and they're organized by how long they've been growing. So the greenhouse next door will be a little bit older, older than this one. Um, and you can see them right there. It's uh, already quite big. This is the greenhouse where they're already a little bit older. And as you can see, they're quite big and almost ready to be picked. Back at the airport again with Tom this time. Um, we're gonna catch flight back to mainland Portugal. And this has to be the shortest line I've ever had for baggage drop off. As per usual, me and Tom are in different flights. He's actually flying 15 minutes after me, but he's landing at the same time. That's what budget airlines do too. He's flying in a fancier airline, the bastard. That was the quickest I've ever been between uh, checking in and going through security and then actually getting to the gate where we got aboard. Um, so we're gonna sit down and uh, do some work uh, until our flight. So it's one hour before my flight and there's loads of people already lining up. This makes absolutely no sense. Not sure why they're in a rush to get in the airplane. I'm, sh I'm sh I sure I'm not, but. Yeah, they're all lined up already. People for Tom's flight are not even here yet. I think those are the smart people. The ones that booked the expensive flight. Yeah, this is unbelievable. The plane is actually not even there. I'm not sure why people are lining up. They have not even announced or opened the gate and look at the line from there, all the way next to the shop, all the way next to the next shop, all the way in front of the food place, and to security. All right, now that is an acceptable length for a line, not what it was previously. So this is where I'm gonna go and board a plane. And that's how you do it. You make sure you're the last one in the line. I 
all the way up and through the back, but my seat's in the front. So I got the emergency row seat. I just asked them for it and sat down. It's all about knowing the little details that makes it a lot better experience because look at all the red leg Bam! flight here to Lisbon. They make you go on a bus and they drop you off on the other end of the airport just so you can walk through the stores, which is really annoying. I think, I mean, they're really transforming these places, places into a mall and it's just not practical. Like, the, the more expensive flights, they'll drop them off right at the point where you can pick up your baggage. Look who it is. How did you fly out later, Tom? How did you fly out later and arrive earlier? I find this outrageous. Outrageous. My flight took off like what? 15 minutes before yours, Tom. Yeah, about an hour. And I'm here like what? How, how much time am I? No, I, I bet we arrived about the same time. Except they dropped them off right here. Yeah, and you arrived. Yeah, you and I had to go with the bus yeah. and <laughs> walk all the way what I just showed you on this time lapse. Um, so yeah, that's the reality of budget travel. That's definitely not a surfboard. And that's also not a surfboard. Just got back from the airport. Tom's dad was kind enough to give us a ride. And yeah, now I'm home. Um, I'm gonna stay in Portugal for, I think, three or four days at my mom's place, and then gonna head off again. So thank you guys for watching. Bye bye.